So here's the 2023 1860 Ultimate Panfish, 2023 model year. This boat is shown in the metallic green with the tan hydroturf. We also offer gray hydroturf, or you can do the non-skid bedliner type coating in either tan or gray. The exterior colors are offered basically all the colors. You can do blue, black, white, gray, silver, camo, just whichever. Eighteen sixty, so it is eighteen. This boat is actually eighteen and a half foot for this year. We ended up stretching it six inches between the uh, front and back seats. So eighteen and a half foot in the boat, and then you have the eighteen inch performance pods on the back. Kind of gives it some more stability with that larger engine on it. It is a sixty inch bottom boat seven foot beam this boat's actually built locally here um, got a guy literally right down the street it is not built by all weld we do sell a lot of all welds and love their boats um, if you pretty much if you get a 15 16 or 17 foot it's going to be an all weld in an 18 foot you have the choice you can do an all weld 1856 18 foot 56 inch bottom maxes out at a 70 or you can do the 1860 being the 18 and a half foot 60 inch bottom and we'll bump you up to a 90 horse on it it is an eighth inch hull it's a little bit thicker this particular boat has the optional in floor LEDs kind of nice at night the rear compartment on this 1860 the rear compartment is huge you have a little bit over a 17 gallon fuel tank can see there the live well pump and bilge pump auto bilge is standard on all our panfish boats be it an all weld or be it a ultimate this boat has a 24 volt trolling motor set up so there are your two trolling batteries and then your starting battery right there we also have the Minn Kota three bank charger with the indicator lights for banks one, two, and three. Here goes the uh, automatic on the live well. So on the ultimate, it actually comes with the live well timer. If you note on the switch panel there, you can flip it down to manual. It's gonna run all the time flip it up to auto it's going to run for a minute and then it's going to cycle off for a period i believe it's two minutes that it's off and then it'll cycle back on while we're there i'll go ahead and show you the gauge panel on the ultimate so you have of course your tachometer you can notice on the bottom of it it does have a digital hour meter and then a fuel gauge. You have a double USB port and a 12 volt outlet. We go ahead and do three accessory switches on the Ultimate. Uh, in this case, the interior lights are wired to accessory one uh, generally, if you get like a Garmin Live Scope or Mega Live or something like that, we will tie it into an accessory switch so it's 
you know, a switched power and whatever other kind of options you may have. Live wheel switch, we went over your manual bilge switch and then on the left you have your navigation lights. On the bottom you have the little round things under the switches are your circuit breakers. If you were to get a short, you know, in the circuit, if you ever turn the live wheel pump on and the live wheel doesn't come on, look and see if the little red light on the switch is on. If it's not on, then that breaker is going to be tripped and you just simply push it to reset it. Storage all the way around. Very roomy. You have your standard front storage spot, your port side box starboard side box, live well. You have a storage box behind the live well. Pretty decent size. And then on the port side, you have your rod box. And it literally goes from the back of the boat all the way up so just however long of a rod you have it will go in there and then you have storage under your seats as well nice box there too This particular customer opted for the removable third seat. So when you take it out, you're just left with a smooth base on the floor. Nothing sticking up, so you can still put a cooler there. And he also went with the Garmin 93 SV touchscreen. It's a very popular fish finder. Touch screen is just very easy to use. And he also has the electric anchors. Those are operated from your switches located right next to where you drive front switch of course doing the front one rear switch doing your rear anchor this boat is equipped with the hydraulic steering ninety horse is just simply too big for the manual stick We'll do a video here in a little bit showing you this boat up and running, but essentially your normal bends of a river, turns that you would encounter, typically just a half a turn will get you where you need to go. Um, if it's more of like a hairpin turn, you may have to pump the wheel, you know, one complete revolution, but it's only two and three quarter turns lot to lot. So you really don't have to move that wheel as much as you would think, uh, especially as compared to a normal console type boat. Trolling motor is mounted over on the left side. Um, on the 1860, the trolling motor actually just fits better and is easier to let up and down and just overall operate with it mounted, you know, going front to back with the boat. You'll notice on the all welds on the smaller boats, 
it actually does not work real well mounted like it is here. So you'll notice on the 1856 and smaller where the trolling motor is mounted, you know, following the V front. And it actually, you know, on those boats, it actually deploys and stows easier. But on the 1860, it being so much wider, it stows and deploys a little bit easier mounted this way. So uh, this customer also did a bar light. You can see it there, kind of helping with driving at night. So. All right, so just kind of let y'all know where we're at here. We are turning pretty much 36, 3700 RPM. Just kind of relaxing. At 28 miles an hour. Good little cruise speed. up there real quick like just gonna lay the hammer down right here Make a 90 degree right hand turn up here. I'm gonna kind of show you all the wheel. It's a 90 degree turn. Wheel. Literally gonna do one pump. One pump back straight. Gentle curves, you can really just kind of about one fourth of a turn like that. You can watch the boat. That's a quarter turn. And that's a quarter turn. So you're really not having to move the wheel much. Another pretty hard turn in the river here, so we're going to just have a little closer to a half turn. Also notice that's a 90 horse motor, driving it with two fingers. Alright, see we're getting to a dead end. So we're going to Come on around here. Go ahead and make a double loop de loop. dock it on the trailer or whatever so from all the way to the left to all the way to the right is one two and three quarter turns so that is lock to lock meaning you're just under a turn and a half from straight so they're straight there's all the way to the right. 
so you really don't have to move this thing much as compared to like a console steering system on a standard steering wheel boat where you're looking at five and a half to six turns lock to lock so this one's literally moving twice as fast you can actually watch the motor it steers pretty quick even though you're not actually moving your arm that quick um guess we can do a little takeoff test here see what kind of time it takes to plane so we are at rest here and back here we can see the throttle we're gonna lay it down No slouch in that 90 horse. It is important that you work your trim. Gonna trim it all the way down right here. Notice the spray. boat's kind of digging a little bit. You want to bump that trim up some. Let you kind of watch it here. Well, get where you can. Let me get under this bridge. There we go. Alright, watch the spray as I trim it up. got that spray behind you. You can actually feel the boat lift up. As you lift the hull out of the water, the steering gets much easier. You can feel the boat pick up speed. It turns on burn less fuel. Up to almost 29. 